everybody. Welcome to a very special Wednesday evening edition of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists from around the world. First, we ask that you please give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on, and let us know in the comments where you're watching from, and if you have any questions for the carvers or our special guests. Let's meet the carvers. <clears throat> First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He's the 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins. Paul Dever, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, huh? a Wednesday. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Happy Wednesday. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday to you. Happy Our guest Wednesday. tonight is a world famous sculptor and character designer. He sculpts original figurines, maquettes, and prototypes for FX Studios, as well as video game and toy companies. Please welcome Mark Newman. Hey, hey. thank you so much for being here. That was wild. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Oh, My name is you. Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Mick. So hard. Hey. Hey. I got to get a headshot. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I, th th this one's been going for me for about three or four years now. <laughs> I can tell. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> Let's check out our scopes from last week. Yeah. Uh, the carving subject ah, was wow. Naughty Witch. So, ah. Matt, <laughs> killed it. Love it. That's cool. Yeah. That's my not eyelashes. Bit. How the heck do you do that? So yeah, the eyelash part was fun. I just took uh, a little chunk of the outside and cut, you know, really thin piece and just and I took another tool and just <laughs> scraped away so it was almost as thin as paper, you know, as, as soon as I could get it and just um, use a little bit of super glue and glued it on over the eyelash. Wow. <laughs> but I, I I always struggle. Mark, you are one of the best in the world at making females. I've seen some of your work; it just blows my mind. And Thank um, you. But but the female form always eludes me. So even an ugly one, I have to like try to, you know, feminize it somehow. And the only way I could think was eyelashes. Was, uh, was eyelashes. And then but in a babushka hat, you know. So. Well, a witch, you know, you can't give too much charm. Oh, you can, I guess. Eyelashes work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah, I love that man. A little feminized, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, super nice. super cool. Well done, Matt. Yeah. Thank you. Here's Paul's, <laughs> and there's that nose he was talking about in the pre-show. Right? Yeah, that's a glue on. And that little bow, look at that. That's crazy. I know, I love it. Yeah, she's she's getting all dolled up. You know what I mean? She's <laughs> feeling naughty. She's <laughs> naughty. She's, <clears throat> she's she even put in her falsies. You like me too? <laughs> <laughs> Very inviting. I can see. I can see how she's getting naughty there. That's no. oh yeah. She's okay. she's the cucumber lady, boys. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about this this little detail, Paul. Is it in the in the hair the or the the is that like twirls from the pumpkin vine? Yeah, it's from last year's vines. I try to hold on to a couple of them for stuff like this. It's, it's, wow. You never know when you when you're gonna need it. It's kind of like um, ephemeral arts and crafts, right? Whatever doesn't rot, you can use again. So the the stems <laughs> and stuff always I always hang on to good ones and. Yeah, I had, I had a bunch of it laying around, so might as well make use of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Nice job. Even the little whiskers, like two whiskers. Are those like little same? Her thing? little or whatever, her little mole, her beauty marker. She <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna pluck she that it. before her date. You know, <clears throat> she calls it a beauty mark, but we know what it is. Oh yeah, <laughs> monkey pox. <laughs> So good. Well, I work in pixels and vectors, and here is my offering for Naughty Witch. Um, of course, I had to go to the uh, <laughs> Naughty by Witch. <laughs> yes, oh and uh, a uh, a special uh, tip of the hat to uh, the Eagles there at the bottom. The the name of the album is Witchy Woman. Um, <laughs> I think I'm locked in uh, to doing uh, album covers at this point I, for all of these things. No, so I think you found your niche, definitely. Uh, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So good. I hope Don has been so happy at the school. Is it? Um, 
Paul, you're hey. breaking. Uh, oh, yeah, it broke up just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The opposite fault. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, God. He's, he's, he's in the Matrix. He's in the Matrix. <laughs> I think he's messing with us. He is. Uh, uh, he, uh, oh. Am I back? Nope. Your little Matrix, he's still like this. Hold on. <laughs> Have you, have you checked the air in the tires yet? Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, we get well, we get Paul back. Um, Look at his face. <laughs> he's stuck, he's stuck in time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, this is how these live events go, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, I'm going to introduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators, and it is responsible for choosing our carving subject tonight. It is the hollow wheel. It is the center spinner. And I would usually throw it to Paul right now. Um, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, there, he hey, is. there he is. Hey, there he is. And oh, now I'll no. throw it to Paul so he can tell you more about the center spinner. He was caught in the matrix. Kidding. Oh, boy. No, no, I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right. So, hello, kids. Okay. So, the wheel. So, Mark, what we're going to do is we're going to spin the wheel twice tonight. First time. It's going to be the inner spin will be what our character is. The outer spin will be the emotion. So for characters, we have to choose from Frankenstein, Wolf. Well, it says Frank, so there's some play there. Frank, Wolf, Demon, Alien, Ghost, Guest Choice, so be ready. Witch, Zombie, Clown, and Vampire. So for our second choice, we'll start with Enraged, Disturbed, Hungry, Nervous, Crying, Disgusted, Smug, Terrified, Embarrassed, or Guest Choice once again. <laughs> so get your choices ready. Okay, kids, are you ready? Right. Let's do it. Right. It's a clown. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Uh, uh. An enraged clown. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. okay. Okay, duck. The door good. is ajar. I for just suggestions. I just worked on a project that has enraged clowns. <clears throat> oh, see, oh, you're way ahead. Feel free to send the reference over. <laughs> well, I, we'll take I, worked on, I worked a little bit with uh, Spirit Halloween Company, and uh, oh, nice. they have a Killer Clowns uh, from Outer Space license, so I've been doing a little stuff with them on that. So kind of the oh, same. Oh, my thing. God. <laughs> That's so, awesome. you know, there's, there's only, I think there's only like 47 of them uh, uh, popping up near my house uh, as of last week. So I'm sure we'll <laughs> see the work. <laughs> You can just go and uh, open the door and ask for some model to come in. Hey. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I've heard worse. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, you don't ask? You don't ask? You just take? <laughs> 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 ask for forgiveness. Not permission. Yeah. Beforehand? Wow, that's cool. It's the new, it's the new whatever, you know. Anyway. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm, I'm committed into the chat. Enraged Clown. Just so you know, guys, I'm not going to be participating in the carving or sculpting on this. Sorry. I don't know if you guys preambled that. We, you said we, we don't we still have love it. you, and we can't wait to, to talk to you about all the millions of things you yes. uh, already we got a lot to talk about. We have plenty to talk about. I uh, can carving. I'll just go. There you go. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Actually, I, I'm, I've been working on ZBrush while, I mean, I, I can split my screen at least on my screen, and I can do, I'm working on stuff there. I could show you that progress stuff because it's kind of the same thing. It's just digital. Sure. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be the theme. Sorry, that's a the whole thing. I, I didn't think that. <laughs> that's okay. I said we have, we have plenty of uh, we have a deck full of your work that we can talk about as well. So actually, I might try that. I'll do it if, if it works out. I'll I'll share. But we'll see. <laughs> Got it. Got it. So um, if you're carving or creating with us, we're going to give you five minutes to get your tools together, get situated. Uh, while we do that, we're going to. Um, we're going to go around the horn and see what our carving oil is for tonight. Um, let's start with uh, Mark. Uh, what do you got? Well, I've got my own blend. It's, uh, of, uh, it's vitamin vitamin C and vitamin B. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's this stuff really works wonders on clay, pumpkins, all kinds of squash, furniture. <laughs> <laughs> it's citric acid. That's what it does. Yeah. I love it. I love it. What do you got, Matt? Um, I walked past this. This is kind of a known beer, but uh Boddington's is kind of like Bonnington. the uh 
the vanilla milkshake of uh, Irish. <laughs> yeah. and, my uh, oh, it's so good, and it and I and I know it's like you can have one because it's I don't know, it's a couple more calories than a normal one, but plus it's one pint. So yeah, that's, I I pick this. It's a pretty known beer, but it it's some somehow it's really good. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Velvety. Oh, yeah. It's like the blonde Guinness. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Love it. Paul, what do you got? Well, for the third week in a row, this wraps up my um, Pistol Brothers Brewing advertising because it's the last one I have. But this is the holy grail of Bissell Brothers here. This oh. is the Swish. It's a limited release. 8% by volume. And just like Matt, it'll be one P-E-I-N-T. And Ooh. it is delicious. And it gets you where you got to go fast. <laughs> well, you like it or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. No choice. All right. <clears throat> hey, Mick. I got uh, from San Diego. This is the Bulbous Flowers Hazy IPA oh. from uh, Society Brewing. Um, it's one I'm not super familiar with, but um, I'm going to learn more about them. I love this can as well. It's super it's cool. Great. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, I mean, uh, we were talking about it with uh, Shan and Van Pell about uh, San Diego being, you know, a lot of breweries down there. So like, this is one that actually that I'm not super familiar with, but I definitely want to know more about because this beer is awesome. So uh, cheers to our creations. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Good boys. Clink. Let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, so let's start out with the conversation yeah, with- right, Let's you know, clink. Ready? <laughs> clinky, oh, clinky. Go to the side. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, go in the middle. Go in the middle. In the middle. Come on, we're all stuck in the middle. Yeah, a little lower. <laughs> oh, in the middle. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> right. There you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, got a, a gin and tonic going over here. Uh, there, you go. there you go. There you go. All right. Scale. Um. So I wanted to start out. Um. Mark, like, what is uh? Where did you start? What is your background? And uh, and how did you get to be a world famous sculptor? <laughs> world. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's worlds with an S. Okay. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> many planets involved here. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. um, well, I just, I mean, I was always just an art kid growing up, drawing and stuff, and not knowing anything else, and um, just always wanted something to do with art. So I drew, drew, drew all the time. Luckily, got into you know high school was good. Got got kind of into it and I was a lot of uh, pretty well with it and I'm sorry I'm speaking really strangely um, went to art school I, I, I studied illustration actually first um, got into that mostly I didn't know much about sculpting at the time this was back you know when you're going to school and uh, so my last semester in art school I took a sculpting class I was always doing my own stuff doing masks for Halloween and I was really into Mets special effects of makeup and I really wanted to get into that and um sorry this I made this too strong maybe um <laughs> and um, started I love it and so I just kept sculpting and sculpting after graduating in uh Academy of Art in San Francisco the college uh with a degree in illustration I uh suddenly wanted to sculpt and I was kind of like what the heck am I gonna do now so I kind of just found work doing stuff for um, gift companies and things, little sculpts here and there. I, I don't know how I fell into it as much, but it just kind of gathered steam. And I just love sculpture, sculpture 3D. And I just kept forcing myself to, to learn and learn as much as I can on my, on my own. So mostly self-taught sculpture wise. Wow. <clears throat> well, so question about your, your, so the pivot into sculpture your last year, what, was there a one class or one medium or like the light turned on for you? Um, not really. Actually, one thing I remember, which is kind of weird and bizarre, which uh, a friend in, in, in college told me, in, in art school, told me that there's a material called Sculpey, Super yep. Sculpey. It was like yeah, brand yeah, new yeah. to me. I didn't know what, to, you know what it was. And it was a polymer clay. You can bake in the oven and you have something kind of permanent, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, the other clays, you'd have to make, you know, sculpt it unless it's a ceramic and fired and it's solid or you'd have to make a mold and cast it into something else and that was always a big pain in the butt for me and yeah. so i wasn't even exploring much until i found sculpey because it was just kind of magical so i work work that stuff all the time and just start to fall in love with it it's a tricky material sometimes for people yeah. it's really soft and you need a 
substantial armature to work with. And but once I found that, it just it kind of just opened the door for me because I was lazy. I didn't want to make molds and all that. I learned it later, but <laughs> I kind of want immediate results kind of thing, guy. So wow. Um, okay, yeah. so so, so are, 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 is what you typically sculpt like what we're seeing in that picture? Is that all sculpty? Yeah, that's super sculpty. That's you know this since I learned sculpt, found out sculpty in the '80s. It's it's a lot better off nowadays. It, they you know okay. they advance the formulas, and this is they have different kinds, denser ones, and so this is um you know that those high. I used to mix my own to get the right consistency. They had a, the hard matte version, and then the softer, and I'd mix them together to get my own little nice oh. blend. And then they started actually making that that kind of blend, which is the gray stuff there. Okay. And it just went from there. And then you can you can cut that thing up, that sculpture. You can uh, make key joints, like, you know, the balls, you know, the male-female joints. You can do mm -hmm. all that with tooling, which I did on all the stuff I've done pre-digital. And um, it's a huge process, a lot of work, because just to cut that thing apart into the parts where I have to realize how a mold is going to go together, how, how they're going to cast, how they're going to paint it, how it's going to yeah. be to the easiest way to cut it up uh, least amount of pieces but easiest way anyway to produce it so doing it that way now I, I can't imagine going back now to doing it that way again because the amount of work after you, the basic finished ta -da, sculpt after that it's you're like probably 60 percent finished you got to go the other oh yeah percent well maybe a little less to get to where it's you can just hand it off to the company in pieces. They'll mold and cast it right away instead of having, you know. So that was, I mean, that took a lot. It was years and years and years of that. Mm. I loved it still, but once, you know, once you change digital, I'm sorry, digital was just, I was fighting it for so long, and, and then I got into it. So it, Yeah, it was, I, Mickey, <laughs> Mickey always kicks off the show, but I'm so fascinated about your, you getting into digital because, for somebody who has a traditional background the way you do and even starting with illustration i'm sure that kind of is like huge foundation for you so what was what was going to zbrush and, and i know that there's an, an reasons in the industry to do it but um what was that learning curve like for you and do you like it now um i do i do a lot i mean i <clears throat> i really do and it took it took me a couple of years literally to get comfortable with it i literally i kind of had to learn it uh, while I was doing jobs, I had to learn. I was working a lot with Sideshow at, at one point, and they were turning, transitioning into um, digital for all their artists. And oh, wow. at first, they liked, they still liked my traditional works. So I kept doing it for the year, for a couple of years. And then they said, well, we really need you to. So I, I was able to get the program. I was actually a great. A uh, friend of mine who helped design the program brought me down to LA with a bunch of guys. And we all, they gave us a crash course on how to learn wow. ZBrush, like a two, wow. eight, eight hour days. And they showed us all this stuff that just was flying over my head and through the years, it, it just trying to grasp it. And they said, okay, after this, go home and just do what we taught you. Learn, 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 keep playing with it. Cause if you let a few days go, you're going to learn, you're going to lose stuff and then you're going to lose the momentum. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it sounded scary as hell because I think I can't yeah. do that. But um, once you embrace it, you, it's so easy. It's it's really nice, and it's uh, I don't know. I like it. I'm ashamed, kind of at, at times that I like it so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah, we, we've heard from, we've heard from a couple others who have embraced it the way you have, and they 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 say that the the speed at which you can get something done versus traditional is, is staggering, you know, uh, it's, it's so much faster. Yeah. At the same time, you can really just go too far. You can always go too many directions, trying oh. iterations, and then you're just like, okay, I got to focus. You know, oh, it's okay. too easy okay. to keep changing directions. So you got to, you know, that's a whole discipline to learn as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So. So when you do key joint key joints, um, in the clay, I've always wanted to ask somebody this and you're the guy to ask. <clears throat> So you have to just basically cut off, say, an arm at the shoulder where you think you can blend it, right? Now you have to, how does it work? You have to dig out the registration key that you're going to use to plug it back in and then build one on and then put the arm back on, kind of blend it again and get it to the point where it just, you can. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, I had to figure out all this stuff, how to do it. I mean, I did 
just what's the best way. So some, sometimes you're sculpting most of the figure and you'll cut things off after it's baked. Sometimes you'll sculpt parts of it. Like I'll always have the hands and the heads uh, separate. So, cause there's so much detail in those. You can't sculpt a hand on a whole figure and try to get in there at all the angles. So right. yeah. with the super, with the Sculpey, you can really just work that way independently on different parts. But then once you can bake those, you can add the clay back to that, to the soft clay, uh, the hard, to the hard clay and, and blend it and use a heat gun to set it. So there's all these different ways to work to where you can, you know, not just sculpt the whole thing at once, bake it and it's done. You gotta, you know, go back and forth with it. Right. But like if you cut off an arm, yeah, you're, you're cutting off. So you're gonna lose, you know, you're gonna ruin the, the uh, contact points of where the seams are. Um, you get a Dremel, I would just get a Dremel tool and carve out the uh, the female part of it, like the joint in the shoulder. Yeah. Carve out the key where it's, you know, you try to get it as square as you can and a slight undercut as it goes in, you know, or the reverse. So, you know, when you're making a key in there, you can pull out. Yeah. Uh, make it as clean as you can. Um, get the other side, I would, always, like the arm portion, I would just grind it out with a tool and make a lot of tooth in there and just get a lot of stuff. So where, um, then I get, um, you would take a, uh, I would, you, you take the female hole, the key hole, and you would get a Vaseline on, on a um, brush and just brush it in there really thin, like a mold release. Just get something in that hole, in that hole before, I would then get actually Bondo body filler and you mix it up a little bit. You, 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 you put, you know, you get push it into the hole as much as you can and then stick the arm on and this stuff gels and like, you know, depending how hot it is, it can gel in 10 seconds or a minute and a half or something, depending how much kicker you put in it as you mix. Then that gels, you can pull it out and it's still soft enough. It holds a shape, but you can carve off whatever you did, whatever splooch comes out the hole, you know, the, as you put them together. These are technical terms, by the way. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, you, they have to be because I'm following. <laughs> so then, and when that sets up fine, then they, they fit together nicely. There's just really clean, but then you still got that, you probably have a jaggedy edge around where you know both pieces meet. So you got to go back in with Sculpey again on each side and kind of try to, try to blend that seam and, Sometimes I would I would just sculpt over that whole part again with a thin layer of Sculpey and then heat gun it and then you, get, you and, the, and then you come in with a knife when it's still soft and you can just kind of really you can just stick an exacto blade into soft baked Sculpey and it, it just sinks in and you can carve a really nice clean and it will pop out so you can really kind of get that clean edge at the end and um, it took me a lot many many trial and error to try to figure that out and uh and then after a while it worked i mean you can do any kind of configuration and with the joints but um and sometimes they would these pieces were cut up to like this the biggest one i did the most pieces were about 32 different pieces oh. i had to wow. key in together wow. and, every, and as i finished it everything's baked ready to send off i can assemble this whole thing and it'll all fit together without pieces falling off. I mean, without glue or anything, it just kind of put together as a puzzle piece. Then, you know, this was successful and everything's balanced. Yeah. And three months later, you finally send your piece off. Yeah, some projects should take three or four months. It was just, you know, nuts. So. Wow. Now, how much has digital cut that down for you? Oh, a lot, a lot, because uh, just just the speed of what you can get you can get something um when they when you first were cutting pieces apart um and and, uh, and zbrush and all that and making joints it was a whole process it was kind of a hard thing but then every iteration they redesigned you know improved the program they came up with better better ways to cut and key and, and now it's pretty simple to do that they have straightforward ways to do it uh, so great. i mean it takes probably one third one quarter of the time now to do a project start to finish probably probably even less wow digitally but then you got you know it's just a digital file you don't have the master copy you can't just mold and cast it you would have to 3d print it which is another process and another expense yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
yeah. and clean it up and do all that and get that to the point where I used to deliver that to them. And now it's they have to do all that unless I have my own 3D printer. And if I take that on, it's another yeah. project Cost. in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So it wow. is amazing, man. The technology is mind boggling. What? Yeah, but and it does take away from the art process sometimes, like the whole creative, like, boom, I just want to get in there and do it. Um, you know, when you're when you're starting something out, but but it once you learn a process to get in and just you can work super fluid now digitally and and just have a lot of fun. And then when it gets to the everything's done and all the great stuff ready, then it's a technical part of, of anything. Then you got to cut the key. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. So oh, wow. there there is a question. Um, have you ever used cosplay? I haven't. I've I've seen it. I've. Um, since since um yeah i've only used uh the only polymer clays i've used uh, is super sculpy i messed around with pro mat which was a, a thing before uh then i think that went away when super sculpy came out but i never tried the cosplay i'm getting the emails and i get hear all the stuff i hear the shipwood brothers talk about it and yeah it's kind of flexible i think i hear which is yeah great. yeah 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 you guys use um, christopher notbush who was on our show was a big twitch guy and he does all kinds of cool <laughs> maquettes and beautiful smaller stuff and he uses that exclusively and he said that that was one of the reasons he you can heat it to a point where it's flexible you're showing us like feathers on on big wing and each one you could still you could flex them without breaking them and um yeah you know, and then paint it and everything else so it's pretty cool stuff i always, I always wondered if it was because sculpey in itself is sort of they call it bubble gummy it's really kind of flexible and well the the, the early stuff was but I always thought that would be more that way if it was a flexible end result, but I don't know. I guess it's pretty much the same. But yeah, that, that would be great because sometimes you drop pieces and stuff chips and breaks, but that would bounce, I guess, right? Yeah, <laughs> like slubber. Land right? right back in your hand and you keep sculpting. Yeah. Right, you just keep doing it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dean wants to know if uh, your uh, shirt is your artwork. No, it's not. It's an officially licensed. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I, mean, I love this painting. It's like, damn, it's right. my yeah, that is that is that okay. is the essence of Halloween right there. I know the master, the, uh, the Godfather of monsters. Yeah, no, I, can't I wish it was my artwork. <laughs> the artwork oh. over your shoulder is though, correct? Oh yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's. that's awesome. I've never seen that one. Some of, which one? <laughs> <laughs> One over your left shoulder. There that would go. be that one. Yeah. The painting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that. Um, I did that in art school in the eighties. Wow. <laughs> wow! No kidding. It's dynamite, man. That thing should be cool. That should be on a t-shirt. I had a good friend and roommate who he was like basically rubber face man, and he would make the wildest expressions, and we would always draw from him and <clears throat> have fun. So one day we just, I just took a lot of pictures, and I was starting to do paintings. So I keep it's kind of half done. I never finish it. So I'm gonna wait 30 years and maybe work. 30, yeah. <laughs> As you're sitting on your deathbed, you do the final stroke. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I just feel that's how I feel some days when things are frustrating. I just turn around and go, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I'll get to it later. He, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in the first syllable of our favorite four-letter word. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, I got a million questions for you, Mark. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mickey. You put me in the spotlight. <laughs> well, you're doing it to me hey, first. you stepped up. So sideshow, okay, okay. So I'm, I, I, just real brief on sideshow. So, do you, do you still work with them? And, 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 or, and, or, I mean, tell us about how you got in there because I mean, it's kind of the, the it, it, again, in, in, in our, in my world, right? It's, it's the coolest damn place to be. And, and did you like your experience there? Oh yeah, I mean. I was always independent with them, um, so I never was an employee. But okay. a, good, um, a guy who we kind of known each other many years ago throughout the, just going to cons and stuff. And the guy who worked there, Anthony Mestas, he's been there for many, many years. Uh, he's a paint paint guy and a product project manager. He he said, "Hey, we sh you know, would you like to do some work for us?" He sent me an email one day. I said, "Yeah, I'd love to," because I was kind of getting out of this i was working on a line called Ebony visions for for many many years it's yeah it was a whole new different um kind of a genre kind of thing mm -hmm. and i really was into more comic book and, and movie characters and all that stuff and so sideshow did that and they called us 
X, absolutely, I want to work do some projects. So, you know, they tossed the first one I did, I think, was She Hulk. Um, I have one over here. I don't know if you have them. Anyway, she was, it was a long, long time ago. Started working with them and it was, it's, it was great. I mean, the art direction was really nice. It wasn't, it was simple. It was, I mean, working, they have concept designs they send you and then you just start the sculpt. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, it was great. And then after that, it just kept coming and coming. I was getting consistent work with them. And so wow. I was, that was nice. Very nice. So the, yeah, the, so then the, then the, the segue, so does that help get you into like the, um, how, um, what's the word, the name of the spiel Halloween's and stuff like that of the world? I mean, the, that type of work, is it a springboard to other, other big jobs for you? Yeah. I mean, for me, that was the biggest client for a long time. I haven't worked with them in a couple of years now. Um, so it's, yeah, but then other stuff came up, but that, that was pretty consistent. They actually, I was on about five years on contract as a, um, under, <clears throat> you know, a, a retainer with them. So I'd be right, exclusive yeah. with them in the collectibles industry and this stuff, nothing, competi okay. no competition kind of thing. So it was basically decide instead of paying per project, you know, building a project, I would just get a flat fee and be working for them for, you know, the whole year. And then it, it was five year stretch, which was really nice. Wow. So I've done all kinds of projects, a lot. Of, and that's when Court of the Dead, they were designing and putting together was happening. Tom Gilliland, creative director there was um, working on this line. And so that's when that started happening. And that was a lot of fun working on that line. Wow. And it was, it was a lot of fun. So when you're, when you're working on your own like that, you, um, versus a, a, uh, an artist with a whole bunch of other folks and like in a big, I'm picturing a big room. I'm, I'm assuming that there's probably somewhere like that exists. So you're, are you, are you getting able to meet some of these other artists and, you know, the, the Andy Burkholz of the world and that kind of thing? Are you, or are you, uh, are you kind of segmented and doing it on your own, like in your own studio? No. Well, back in the day, they, it was, it was a lot of fun because they, they would, um, they would invite the artists, independent artists. They had they had a, a pretty good size in-house crew for all kinds of stuff, um, sculpting, uh, concept design, um, you know, all kinds of uh, the, the painting department, all the molding and casting. They do all the prototypes in-house there. Oh wow! So really, and so they would once in a while, you know, invite the out-of-town artists into uh, to come down and work in-house with them for a week or so a stretch and wow. it, they had this artist loft they call it which was their little property they owned where it had like four or five different uh rooms in it you know a nice condo and apartment and every so often you you know they ask you to come out and you stay a week and you work in-house just just to feel part of the family it was really really cool. oh, that's so cool and that's, oh, that's how you get cool. to face time a lot of these artists and become friends with them you know and stuff and then they would invite actually invite us to go to san diego comic-con every year um and then you know so we kind of get on their um their list to 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 come in and just check out the show so that's the first time i ever went to the comic cons was through sideshow and um, I had network and opened my brain huge you oh, know, I bet. that was a lot of fun and so that yeah back in that day it was just a blast just to you know co-mingle with artists that were just from i mean they work with a lot of people from like Argentina and and stuff when they come into town you just start to oh, meet these yeah. people you've known their work like Emil Carr Fong I don't know if you know his work um he Emil Carr he did the, a lot of the design work on Court of the Dead so meeting him was really a lot of fun and he's a really cool guy wow um so it just yeah it just helped uh they helped to really kind of powwow everybody together and, and feel creative and make the best stuff you can that's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, the, <clears throat> getting getting to meet other artists is kind of the the joy of it, right? It could be it's, now back before Absolutely. Instagram and Facebook and stuff. You really had to dig to find other artists' work. Oh, I know. And so that would become like your favorite artist instantly. <laughs> like one photo of something. I know, right? And how else would you find them? You have to get like. Well, I was into special effects and makeup and stuff, so Fangoria magazine. Yeah, Fangoria. That was the kind of the, the Bible back then. Wow, yeah. that's what everybody was. And then uh, even uh, what was it? Cinefix came out. You know that mm -hmm. that made all the you know just the effects magazine to show how everything was made. Right. And looking at Rick Baker's stuff is always he was the god. So you know you yeah, follow right. 
yeah, once yeah. like poke around Fangoria and find Rick stuff, even though he wasn't always gory. But. Yeah. But, uh, I remember I remember going to the library and kind of looking up books on monster making and stuff like that, and just looking for the old. They'd have the old photos of some of the old Wolfman movies and stuff like that, and I would just walk over to the photo the photocopier, <laughs> yeah. and just photocopy all the pictures I want, and I'd leave there with like the you know the vanilla envelope <laughs> full of photocopies and just walk out so I had something to draw or sculpt or something. <laughs> Yeah, you know, kids know. today, kids today, Mark. You know, yeah, I know. They know the struggle. <laughs> the struggle, the struggle. Yeah, exactly. When I when I was sculpting, I have to show you know, okay, progress. I would have to take oh, yeah. photographs, like you know, with a camera, not your phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, go to the one hour photo because that was the new technology. Get it that developed. Was huge. Right. Photo and you realize half of them are blurry. It doesn't look good. Worry, but here's the stuff I could send. Mail it out to the client. Three days later, depending where they are, find you know, get it, go over it, call you up, talk talk to you about the changes and stuff. Good lord. Uh, you do changes. You fix stuff. You do the same thing with photos. Take three days. So the process was so much longer, of course. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, you're telling you're telling me the client had changes. <laughs> Shocking. Changes, fixes, um, edits. <laughs> what do they call them to be polite? Um, I don't know. Edits or <laughs> edits? Yeah. Let me, make, let me make a couple of suggestions on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, and I, I just think of that, like, God, what the heck? How archaic was that? Of course, it was nothing compared to generations before us, but. Right. Anyway, it was, uh, yeah. So learning it, digital was like completely erased a bunch of that bullshit. <laughs> so they, yeah. they would have to, they would have to charcoal sketch something and ride a horse into town, which would take a month. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, Wait, oh, what is it? <laughs> and a lot of times it's like that head looks like 10% too large. Can you make that smaller? And like, oh, I can, sure. but I redo the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just take 10% out of it. Yeah, so it's like, how about you, you just show it to him, so you pull it back. Like, how about that? Is that, like, Is that bigger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, literally, I, I would work, you know, most of the stuff I did early with Clay was six scale stuff. So it's all, you know, a, a, a person would be about 12 inches tall, you know, if it was okay. six scale. So uh, when I was working on the Ebony Visions line, it was with, with Willis Designs, it was all um, working. And sculpting these head, you know, mostly the, the they always look at the heads. It has to be right, right. And so this art director was just, and, and she was good, very good, but really, really nitpicky on everything. And that, you know, it's a good art director, but it can, you know, drove me nuts a lot of times. But so I, you know, I'd send the, the, the heads. They were like literally as big as my thumb here. Mm -hmm. And so, wow. When I sent a photograph, you know, they're of course I zoom in and everything else, large screen when they see it. It's like okay this eye maybe turn this corner down slightly maybe oh. turn this nostril up a little and if you can do you know it's all this tiny stuff you're like <laughs> yeah okay i can and then it would come back with and every time i get an email from her it was just line uh, all this red lines wow. over stuff and little it's <laughs> like yeah anyway so i started to send shots that were so it's in focus and smaller, so they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, do yeah. make you work hours and hours on something that's going to be molded, cast, and painted like crap, and put on a shelf that people wouldn't notice anyway. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so is that is that the dream job to become the uh, the art director, so you can just tell people that they they cool. screwed it up. Depending, <laughs> depending what kind of person you are. If you're a, yeah, exactly, artist, exactly. Yeah, if you're an know. artist. No, the Cruella Deville want wanted that job. I think you know. <laughs> I would not want to. I mean, I I can art direct, I guess, here and there on my own on my stuff. But if that was my job to tell and fix and do all that, I mean, it's it's not what I do, and it's it wouldn't be fun at all. Yeah, I, yeah. I would probably drive everyone else nuts because I I'm a perfectionist on my own self. Yeah. So I, I I would have to realize, you know, some art directors aren't actual, haven't done a lot of the artwork. So they, it's, you know, they have, uh, they don't realize some things sometimes what they're asking if, if they want to change something. Well, the, the one thing that I learned when I was a creative director and an art director is that 
most of the most of those people are getting feedback from somewhere else to higher up. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's true for sure. And so they're trying to translate it and trying to know that, that I mean, that, uh, I understood because being an artist as well, that I know what, you know, what it takes. And, you know, it's like it also the egos and, and uh, I have to be very careful about how yeah, I yeah. word things. And and uh, <laughs> but but it's I'm trying to, like, please two parties here and and, and not like annoy both of them. Yes. So it, it's, it's very tough. And um, but I also I mean, being on being a, a lower designer when I, when I was in that position, I always thought that are like, Oh, you're just trying to justify your job. You know, you're just trying oh. to give me, give me feedback, you know? So um, it, it becomes this, but if you understand kind of where they're coming from, it's, it, it makes it a lot easier. And, and I learned to communicate better with, with those people. And I say like, Hey, can you give me a heads up as like what they're looking for? Be, be more in communication about it. Yeah. That, that's a good art director. Cause you, you I'll run across a few that are just do this, fix yep. that. It's like, mm. why is it? T tell me something you might tell me something you like about this. You know, a lot of times they don't tell you the stuff they like, and that that's important. It's like, okay, you like this, you like that. I'm like, okay, I can I can bring that stuff over to this thing, and and I know you like a certain part. Okay, I can add that to here. And if, if they only tell you this, fix that, don't do this that looks like shit i mean <laughs> <laughs> right it's like really you're beating me every time give me a, you, know, I, 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 you know not that you need praise or anything i just want to hear you know i love this i like that this works well but if we can just tweak that tweak that that'd be great i mean yeah pros and cons you know, man it's all pros and cons i understand cons. it all i completely and it's give us, yeah give us some context of why you're yeah, yeah. well i mean dean brings up a good point like if i was trying to art direct matt and paul um, like how would I do it? Even though I know them and I know their capabilities and I know what they do, but I don't do what they do. How do I get, you know, uh, the client or, or, or my boss or whatever is I'm trying to communicate that to them. Uh, meanwhile, they hate me, but I'm trying to communicate through, uh, you know, to them as well. So, and then we're on, on a deadline and we have budgets and all that stuff too. Mickey, just, stuff. just keep feeding us beer. I think that's like the answer. <laughs> right. After if we were to get a steak to <laughs> at some point it probably will fall off the rails but you know until that point you know. <laughs> um i got a question for you mark um when it comes yeah. to like your uh your sketches because you, you talked about being you starting in an illustration oh by the way i, I switched to uh to whiskey <laughs> whoops oh, well done it's you my, my other one was gone what do you want me to do so, um, so um when it comes to your illustrations, and I, I'll, I'll admit right away, like whenever I need like a specific look or whatever, I'll troll your your illustrations because they have so much beautiful detail. Do you ever use those to make your sculptures, or or, or is that a place you start, or is, are those just completely separate? A um, lot of them, a lot of times, it's separate. It's just that I mean, th this was that piece was something I was working on with a with a company, a client. Um, and I just took, I just, I was working on design. This, this is actually a draw over on a uh, zebra sculpt on this one. Wow. Wow. Which is, it was kind of, yeah, I could tell by the gray background, you could see that just the lines go. It was a digital. And then I just oh. went and, and took it into Procreate and just on my own, just, I want to mess around with this and have fun with line and texture. So I just drew over it. Okay. Um, and so, but, yeah, most of most of my stuff that I post that are drawings and stuff on my Instagram are just my own. Just have fun, sit sit on the couch, watching TV at night after work, and just go nuts with stuff. Um, yeah, and it, some if I come up with something cool, it's it's always Eric and I, I like like a sketch, you know, sketch digital sketchbook. It's just there to I'll sometimes come back and make something out of it. I'll, I'll take a uh, design and then start it in ZBrush or something, or even clay and. Or even clay. Oh, hello. Oh, and then um, yeah. old school. Yeah. I don't know what the heck. And then um, and then I'll it'll evolve into something else. Even of course, but uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't use it as a you know a specific design and to to the T unless it's uh unless I go way off the rails. Oh, I should go back to the original drawing. But so yeah. I, I don't do a lot of explorative drawings for before I start sculpting on a project if it's because a lot of times I'm handed a design concept, you know that's already there and it's ha it's approved by the clients and the, oh, okay. and yeah. the licensors and all that, depending what project it is. And then, so you got to follow that pretty close. Um, okay. 
Okay. Sometimes you get a flex a little, and uh, you can try something and show them, oh, this looks cool. I think that's cool. What do you think? Oh, we like it, but the client still likes the original. So you go back, <laughs> and on, which is yeah. fine. But this, yeah, just this is all fun stuff to me. This, this yeah, and so so this is a total tangent. But we have we we've had on our show a couple of times a, a artist named Ron Free who makes amazing mugs like uh, like Turkey Mark and those those type of like oh, yeah. things. And Ron does a lot of this kind of stuff where he's, it's just like these demented, oh, really man. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and I and I, I I you know admit I've used both yours and Ron's. Um, you know, uh, inspiration wise, uh, many on uh, many pumpkins and stuff I've done because it's just, it just has so much expression. I just, I, anyway, huge fan of this too. So please don't stop drawing, just sculpting only. But, uh, I know, I so I, I, when I found Pro, <clears throat> the iPad, excuse me, and Procreate and the Apple Pencil and all that, I don't know if I've touched paper and pencil anymore. Since, oh, wow. Like, which is kind of a shame. Again, it's like, I don't. It's like I'm ashamed of went digital all around anyway, but <laughs> um, it's, it took a while to get used to drawing on the glass feel and all that. But then that program is so amazing. You do so many cool things once you learn it. And it's once you learn something till you're comfortable and you can fly with it, you get past all that. I mean, traditionally in anything because, wow. Well, anyway, so uh, yeah. yeah, it's there's a huge learning curve, especially with oh, Procreate. Cool. Like you said, once you can learn how to use an Apple Pencil, in in the just the pressure alone can yeah and not be yeah because he's like okay they used to make those films you can put over your you know clear films you can put over your yep. screen it has a little mm -hmm. grain to, to make it feel like you're on paper right never tried it but i should have uh -uh. next next time don't change a thing don't don't change anything don't change the formula God, don't yeah. change it i don't know I think it is change change. It's called evolution <laughs> oh i like that <laughs> I'm definitely Mickey's not, Mickey's not only a singer, he's a former pro wrestler. Do you know that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or is that for another time? <laughs> uh, there is always time for the disco machine. That's right. It's Separated so shoulder, cool. lacerations, and more concussions than I care to admit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Or can't remember. <laughs> yeah, you can't remember them. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> but look at you you don't have a weird face or anything you're still you're still a good looking guy that's good <laughs> i you know it, I, again uh clean living um but yeah my I, but my uh my vice was at one time pro wrestling <laughs> <laughs> you should see him below the waist <laughs> yeah exactly i yeah i forget it <laughs> that escalated quickly <laughs> yeah. we're on to a different kind of program now folks yeah, yes, yeah. Hello. yes. Welcome to the second hour of. Uh, yeah. So, um, wait. I got another another thing. I just I have to ask you about. So, you're you're you have pugs, the yeah, dogs. Well, one okay. now. One. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I just lost a dog recently too, and I, I, good lord. Okay. So, but but I mean, your your pug sculptures are epic. Um, have you had people? Have you had people like say, um, you know, I had a pug. I got to have a. I mean, commission you to do pug stuff at this point because you've done you've done some great um sculptures with pugs oh thanks thank you um they're amused for for me completely um i i've had some people ask that but it's like well you know what i no it's kind of my own just i have fun doing this stuff and it you know usually yeah. people like inside don't re realize at all what it costs to make a sculpture like that or something oh yeah yeah, yeah. And to get it produced and stuff so you know, when I did that peeing pug fountain, I don't know if that's you're referring to. I had, you know, it was our first pug we had. And I just did a, just he was inspired me because he the way he'd stand up on the like against the counter to get food, and just the way their wrinkles and their butt go and the tail and all, just the <laughs> yeah. form of him standing that way, is was just amazing. So I I did a sculpture and I said this got to be a fountain. So I worked on it, worked on it, and and then I just cast it and then um. Then I showed it around after many years, and I, I posted on Pug um, Facebook groups, <laughs> and just as a hey, you know, and I get, you know, I mean these these Pug people are nuts because all yes, like, that's what I was them. asking about because I know that they are just just like any other niche group, right? I mean, in, in yeah, I mean, you know, to breed, you know, it is. I mean, there's, you know, everyone loves their own breed, but somehow Pug people are a little nuttier. There's you know, there's like Frenchies and. <laughs> Anyway, it's it's 
So I got all these people asking, wow, where'd you get that? I want one. I want, oh, it's mine. Here it is. And it costs this much. It's bronze. Oh, that's too expensive. I wish I can afford it. Can you do it in concrete? Like, no, it's bronze. It's my own. But if you want one, it's, you know, I, I, I price it at just a little over production, not a whole lot. Right. So I can, you know, actually sell some. And so over the years, I've been, you know, every so often somebody who really, really wants it. And, and usually it's like cast to order. It's like, you like it. Okay. Put a deposit down, have to go to the foundry, ah. to, the foundry to make it. And right. that takes, you know, a good couple of months or at least three, sometimes two, sure. and sometimes it goes longer depending on the process. And so it's okay. You can pay half down and then half when it's done, it's a little easier to deal with. So, but yeah, I sold probably about 30 of those throughout the years. Have you really? Wow. Just, you know, it's been a, probably about 10 years since I sculpted it. So, wow. Um, and then there's this guy, I just, I did him digitally not long ago. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh my God. I love that. And this is still the 3d print. I got to It's a, I got to get a cast and molded. So it's, it's in parts. So I had oh. to refashion oh. uh, the refash. This is a, a Bondo here. That's why it's a different color. Cause oh. this seam didn't quite like, um, this seam looks like, like, like a wrinkle. It wasn't yeah. as crisp on uh, the casting, so I had to anyway. And this tongue comes off. So when you want to, you know, it's only three pieces now. I think that could be produced that way. So I'm talking. I'm mm -hmm. I got a lot of people interested in it. I just got to get it produced, which is a lot of money. So yeah, good lord. Oh yeah, I love that one. That's super stylized yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, it's it. so beautiful. I even think it of having because you know you have it where like maybe inside it can have this. Oh. Just like kind of water. balancing inside on one of those, you know, so it's, it's always kind of a teetering thing. I don't know. Yeah. Like like the uh, like the arm on the cat at the sushi restaurant that always just says, yeah, 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 yeah. A little yeah. spring inside there. So the thing is, just, you know, on a counterweight, just like, just kind of wag. I think it'd be hilarious. That would be I a great that. idea. <laughs> and then I, I, I bring pugs into all my uh, stuff. This, well, this is the older one, but let me grab this guy. I did this many, many years ago. It's, I just called him Devil Dude. Oh wow! He's missing his staff. He had a, he was holding a pitchfork here, but yeah, he's a long base. Whoa! Oh wow! Let me get the background. See, if, anyway, um, wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> he's too big. I can't do it. Um, no, you, you can see him really well. Yeah, I mean, that clear. says pug, right? I mean, <laughs> wow, it totally does. I just love the design of pugs. They have this face that just works. Do all so pugs? Do all pugs have nipple rings? Yeah. <laughs> the the female ones, have cool. six of them. You got to get only the cool ones. Six only the good ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I, I even made another version of this guy, a pair of these guys, and this is of course smaller. So he's he's kind of oh, wow. oh, so goddamn good. So cool. He's just oh, in a why, why we make it and he's on a Great little as well. I think I can do this to this guy. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, those really do a good job, don't they? Wow. Look at um, that. Yeah, there we wow. go. We got all the detail now. Wow. And I love how they have no neck. That's just the best. I know. And so even even though see the texture in that and the sculpt where I just love leaving all those gore marks and yes it just leaves a lot of energy to the surface of the sculpt that's even after you paint over it i mean with this then i did another version of his his i guess his not doppelganger but so i did a version of a an angel an angel version <laughs> oh, oh my god look so at he's that kind of a zen master just kind of <laughs> so cool. He's he's fully zenned out. You know, he's got his his pose down. Like, <laughs> no, he's oh, like so he's good. content. So he's got a little. Oh, that's just stuck on there. His little. I never painted this obviously. Just so these are just resin castings, primer, but so great. And these were clay. These weren't digital. Wow. But then this thing, this thing was digital. It's I didn't do it too long ago, but it was a model kit. I had. I don't know how to do this. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's back yeah. to clear. So wow. are, Jesus. Oh yeah, wow. look at the teeth. So he's a goblin character. Um, yeah. Obviously. Again, the fat so rolls and the and the skin and it's just just epic. You can even see the if you could read the weight 
of him yes. sitting on yes. that thing. So this was digital. So that the detail you can get in digital is just amazing. I mean, it is. the wings. Now, does that boil down to your 3D printer too? To translate. Oh, it yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had a good friend of mine produce these. Uh, he's got high end machines. But the good thing about digital, you got this, right? And I wanted to make another, so I took the same file and just did a magnet. Oh, oh nice. Oh, I love those teeth. That, that, like, is such, and all the wrinkles around the face. I'm going to so steal that's, that's digitally printed. That's the same head, just printed bigger. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the that's detail crazy. Is how perfect they get it i know okay that's nothing here's another <laughs> i mean nice. as far as kind of the detail you got this was a caricature frank bust i did and this is oh um, my god I love that. but look at the skin detail on this thing. it's unbelievable yeah it is i mean this I is mean, still flashing and that's this and that's literally from the file to the print i mean I think no, it's, this is a, then it was molded and cast because this is a casting so you see okay, okay. The flashing lines where um oh a near the neck there there's okay. i mean this is a, a casting so it's been ground down and stuff but okay. uh it still held the detail is amazing anyway so amazing yeah wow and you there's know it's scary there's... this is the stuff they let us use the general public <laughs> yeah. yeah what do you mean there's there's technology out there there oh, yeah. They reproduced me somewhere. Oh, I know. Yeah. There's, there's a Paul walking around right now down our street. Well, <laughs> printing, digital printing, they can print T cells to make cartilage to grow T. I mean, to print cartilage to, to uh, grow T cells on to make ears where you can graft onto a person. That's insane. And yeah. then it's and then it's biological. I mean, it's biological 3D printing. They do that. Yeah, that's, oh, that's oh, just wild. Anyway. Throws me away. There's a that's, question. That's, that's, um, that's your next job. Are these available as kits? A bunch of these were. The Frankenstein is. I, I still. I, I was selling these years ago. I mean, a couple of years ago, Mancha Palooza. I mean, I got another. I mean, I got a whole bunch of these. This was a not so Feratu. I oh, it. I love that. Did you have that? I think you might have had. Did you have one of those at Mancha Palooza this year? Painted? Yeah, yeah. I had a painted one. A friend of mine, Ed, Ed Bradley, painted. So Good good. Lord, that's awesome. But anyway. Um, this guy's got a little attitude. This was a model kit. I only have one left. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh. macho, I, so, so macho. I first, originally had <clears throat> Adam as a. He also had a uh, hang loose, a hang loose swap out finger, but so you know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the middle finger <laughs> yeah. yeah. hang loose, or anyway. So I like again. You know, it looks like a pug. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was getting into the reason wow. that, like a, you got the pug back. Oh, the tattoo. <laughs> yeah, so this guy, I just called him a uh, pine size punk, is all I call him. So, uh, so cool. <laughs> Dynamite. One of the kits you had at Monster Palooza that I I still kick myself for not getting, and I, I might just might hit you up is your werewolf in the graveyard. It's like oh, one of my favorite all time things that you've done, and and it is it is just it's horrifying and yeah that's it oh there he is it's, it's, yeah, it's so one of my favorite things you've done it is that's the, the look on his face and the and just the terror plus all the the gravestones and everything else you got going on there is just it's just Thank remarkable you. oh my god one of my favorites you've done it's hard to focus this but yeah this this no one last can't year, even really we're not long ago. i had a i had a good friend of mine who's he produces a lot he's a factory in china they wanted to work with me a lot, so I just they we worked a deal to produce this model kit with them. Yeah, and there you go, oh, Mickey. Thank you. Look at that, Mick with the uh, there it is. Yeah, the top there rope. It. Top <laughs> rope. Nice. And yeah, that was and this this was um this was gonna be a, a company was interested in producing this because they were gonna make their own monster line and and it just didn't work out. So I just said I'll make a kit out of it. So just did it and so this is a faux bronze painting of it paint version of it but yeah but i mean to produce this in china i haven't sent it to me it was really expensive because it was okay. right around it was still around you know covid time because it was just last year or the year before yeah, yeah it was yeah. last year when i finally got them 
man, just I had to have them shipped to my to my house. So it was just a bunch of money. <laughs> but oh, I, bet. I, bet. I sold the ones I had, so I, I made a profit on it at least. So that was good. But I appreciate That's you liking it. Oh, I said it's beautiful. And I think, you know, since I was a kid, like Grendel and, and those kind of and werewolves in general have been the thing that I've been the most afraid of, like nightmare when I'm, you know, kid stuff, but it's just you know the the emotion on this one is just you just can't tear you apart. You have no you have no hope. And yeah, and just, I I just kind of love the wily coyote ver feel. Yeah, they were just that the longer ears. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, just yeah. Is that so? That was digital. Yeah, this was digital. I wonder if wow. I can find the digital file. It's, well, it's on my Instagram. That did there's a turnaround digital video. I don't know if you want to pull that up, but. Um, Such adorable. Thank you, Carla. The adorable yeah. creatures. They're huggable. I think that's the, the term I was thinking of. Do you see? I don't see a um, the chat. Do I have to? Do, can I see it? Um, oh, if you look, if you look at the screen. Oh, uh, there it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wasn't even. Oh, Randy. Hey, sorry, Randy. Hi. <laughs> oh my god, I'm an idiot. There no worries. There's the chats. Thanks, everybody. Kirk Durfee. Hey, Kirk. Hope you're still around. <laughs> Probably, everybody left. All the guys not even responding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I throw them up on the screen sometimes, and you know whoever the question. Well, I didn't have the comments thing on there, so now I do. Um, cool. Oh yeah, that's oh. this one's a. Uh, I did for uh, PCS. It's um, uh, Premium Sculpture Studio or Premium Collectible Studio. Uh, they make this was a one third scale, so this is a big, big piece. Of that out. is big, yeah. Wow, I never saw the sculpt yet, but um, this was the painted version that they had posted on their um site after, and the paint was really nice on it. I thought it turned out cool. It reminds me of one of those old coop posters, like the yep, like, that would have been on like you know, a, a uh, you'd see something like that advertised when you know, White Zombie played with uh, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like those old things, and it just, but it's it's a live version of it, which is so cool. <laughs> yeah, or like the, on the on the side of a van. Yeah, right. Airbrush <laughs> van. That's yeah, right. Man. Park down. Van, right. van, you don't want your daughters going in that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one that pulls up in front of your house, and you're like, shit. Yeah, so we have a she devil in the chat. So yeah, this is this oh. is a she devil with the bloody oh, no chair hanging out the back door. What? I love that. This was a uh, called Purgatory. She's a comic character in um, old comic books. So great. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a band called Lords of Acid, and yeah. um, from the early '90s, and uh, I actually still have the poster of it. Oh yeah. And this is what it remind me of because there's like a, re a like it's like a plump girl, but she's like a devil. And then, but she's all red. But it, this is exactly what it reminded me of. So like oh, the wow. coop, and it was it was drawn by Coop. So it was like it was oh, cool. su super cool. So um, yeah, I, I love this so much. And then uh, Matt and Paul like le they love wrinkles. So I had to include this one. Oh, <laughs> dude, we do love wrinkles. But that's, that's like actually that's actually the head sculpt of um, that they didn't use. Uh, the the piece I did for Sideshow called um, uh, what was her name? Jeez. Oh, she was the, the uh, sorry, I'll get it. Can we, is this live? No. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> I can just pause real quick. We can rewind the tape. Yes. Yeah. Everybody rewind. go do something else for a minute. <laughs> yeah. It was part of the core of the deadline. It was, uh, she was the Egyptian-ish looking one. Gosh. Drawing a blank. <laughs> um, anyway. Sounds like she, she she was a uh, she had this big pharaoh headdress on in, in a, and it, and and then she had this this metal mask a beauty mask it was all like a beautiful just smile expression it was a metal mask so when you pull the mask off this is what she actually that's looks what like. she actually looks like oh my god that's beautiful. oh wow and she's um she didn't even know her title the eater of flesh oh um, anyway jeez I can't think of the name I and they didn't it. use it. And this, it was a little too, because she was supposed to look like she was drowned and, you know, underwater for many years. Bloated? Yeah, that's... Anyway, that's so, no, th so they had another guy's uh, sculpt, the face for her, the, the underneath face, and it, it turned out great, too, but it was a whole different... It was more of a mummified-looking face, which kind of worked better, I think. Th this was a little odd for the rest of the character. 
Um, mm. So it was a good, you know, one of those art direction decisions that worked really well. And it was speaking just- of, hmm? Speaking of mummified faces, oh, Cleopsis? Cleopsis, thank you, that's it. Oh, wow. Look at that. No, you right like the field, <laughs> top, top rope. The chat saved us. Brian. That a boy. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, so, thanks so speaking, Brian. <laughs> speaking of wrinkled faces, one of the other things I love about some of your work is the work you do uh, with uh, our friends from the Rolling Stones. Uh, and I know you've got you've got a number of uh, mix and and uh, there we go. Look at Mickey out of oh, the top. Awesome. I, I absolutely you. love these. They're a hundred percent them in the perfect character form. It's like <laughs> it's amazing. These, these yeah, that awesome. was this was so much fun. I mean, I did this, I, I did Mick first. It was like just to play around. And this this is probably about a six, seven hour, six, seven hour sculpt. Okay. So I wanted to keep it loose. I mean, if you zoom in, it's super, super loose. And that's what I love about it. And then I decided to do, you know, um, Keith. And so, yeah. And that came out cool. I liked it. And they're still, they're behind me. They're still clay sitting there. Wow. But the Keith, the Keith one looks highly detailed because of all the wrinkles. Yeah, I think that's probably what you did. <laughs> that's his actual skin texture. I even stuck some wire in that cigar. It looks cigarette. awesome. There's a little wire smoke kind of. So good. Um, yeah, those are fun. I mean, I got a. I kept saying I got to do the other two, and then that one guy died. I don't even know the other guy's name. Sorry, but Charlie, Charlie Watts. Charlie Watts. Yeah, that's Charlie Watts, the drummer. Yeah, Charlie Watts. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I should Charlie Watts would be, and so looking at actually, when I try to these are called. They were they're kind of caricatures I was trying, but then after doing them, I'm like God, they're almost caricatures of themselves because this yes. just the way they look. It really is. <laughs> it is. They are caricatures of themselves. So it, it's kind of just that way. So Charlie Watts, though, would have been, I've seen. I used to. I when I try to do a caricature, it's it's really really good to um, as reference and as as um, for me at least and, and to uh, to just. Um, what do you call it? Explore and to find out stuff to inspire you. I, I go to other people's works that that deal with caricature, and you just look at how they dealt with this person mm. to make you know what they exaggerated at least right. to a point to where it's not way over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, some go way over the top, like um, Kruger, one of the, my favorite uh, caricaturist artists. I think he's a German guy. Look him up. He's done the stones forever, and his stuff. And he's a painter. He's not a sculptor but the stuff is amazing and they he pushes it he's one of the guys that pushes this stuff right to where it's like not looking like them <laughs> or, or, or looking like them too much it's just it's just amazing so he's a very good inspiration for me that guy i look you know who i use sometimes for inspiration on caricature stuff is cleat shields oh yeah 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 he has that weird ability to just it's like, how the hell did you catch that? I didn't even see that in the person's face, and now that's all I can see when I look at them. <laughs> I'm gonna find, I hope I can find. I'm gonna look on on my phone to find the the funniest, most amazing caricature of Samuel L. Jackson. Oh God! Oh, please find it. What a gift, though, to be able to find that one really, really recognizable feature and like make that huge or crazy and still and like instantly recognizable that just to me it's just I, know. I love it okay i see a bunch here but this one just <laughs> he goes so far as the guy looks like you know admiral calamari you know he's got the eyes way <laughs> <laughs> i gotta find admiral it when calamari. i talked about it i gotta find it for you because it's you but know. they but like you said you still know who it is no matter oh, it's, how yeah, yeah that's how the part it is ready yeah is funny as hell yeah yeah the um oh, oh look Jesus. at the glasses are on yeah. the face <laughs> look at that oh, i love that oh my god <laughs> that is beautiful and you <laughs> know who it is aren't even on the eyes <laughs> oh, like, yeah. on his nostrils i love that <laughs> wow. that's that's that? i gotta follow that it just cracks me up every time i see it that's too <clears throat> now who was that i gotta i gotta <laughs> I'm gonna give oh, that a follow. I don't even know. I gotta look that up. That's shame. so we so Sorry. we we've been blessed. We've had Tom Fluharty on. We've had uh, Jason oh, Siler. Awesome. Yeah, and Jason Siler did our little fun uh, caricature, and I think my head looks too big in it. You know, but you know, <laughs> Fluharty is one of my favorites as well. I should have named him first. That guy. We have a couple of his prints we bought because he he he's done some pugs that we like. Oh, oh yeah. We he oh. did one of a uh, the bride and 
Frankenstein and the Bride and their pet pug, and they're just like a family photo. And that was just, we have to have that. It was so. <laughs> Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he did a whole book of dogs, didn't he? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and his cowboys. I mean, literally everything he does, I'm like, God damn it, that's good. I mean, no, he shows his, his photos that he uses, and then yeah. when he, the way he makes them go really exaggerated. Oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> that's and a total the way he paints and man. draws. The way he paints and draws them are just so perfect and fine arty and scribbly. I just, I mean, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like layers of shapes. It's, yeah. it's, if you look at like the squares and triangles, squares and, and then as you zoom out, it's. it's I know. If you can take a crop of his, of any of his images and study it for hours of how he did that. You know. I have, and it almost made me so stop cool. all art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't figure it out. My brain don't work like that. I wish it did. <laughs> Paul, you got us. You got his recent book, right? Your the cowboy one. Yeah, yeah, I got cowboys. I gotta get yeah, that. and I actually I got the uh, the animal namaste one. Animal being my favorite Muppet, so it's just animal doing the namaste pose, floating, and the chain is just so delicately touching the ground. It's so cool, <laughs> dynamite. Very cool. But that's the thing you go down the rabbit hole. Like it, I'm sure people do it on your site too, Mark. Where if they they grab a kit, now all of a sudden they grab another kit. Like you go you you go down the rabbit hole of I need another one. I need another one. The next thing you know, like <laughs> I have fixed. no money in my bank account, or I just maxed out a credit card. <laughs> what just happened? So I want, I, I want to get to uh, some. Uh, I, I want to congratulate you. Um, you. This actually is a new thing. Uh, tell us about this. Yes. Yeah, I just um, I've I've been watching um, you know, beautiful bizarre magazine stuff for a long time. Just kind of been on you know, it's been on my radar of the stuff that they produce. That thing looks elongated. What? That's a weird shot of it. Oh, it, it's from your. Uh... Really? Yeah. It's it from looks your all. Face. No, that's stretched out. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Unless I, it's my I, own. Maybe it's my own. It's on your Facebook, uh, whatever your page is. Browser just, window. Just from there. Oh my God, let me look. Because that, that looks. Yeah. That's. <laughs> what <laughs> direction is it? Is it stretched out up and down? It's stretched out up and down. Oh, that, She's it, supposed uh, to be four foot two. She looks five foot ten. Well, on yeah. my feed, it looks like this. Oh, interesting. Which is back. Is that what it looks like on your feed? <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> You're awesome, buddy. We're going to get somebody on the phone, Mark. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, that's I'm going to I mean, that's... I tune in. It's flipped now. Let me uh, wait. Oh, interesting. Here. No. That looks so right. When, when does this get kind of judged? And when do you find out if you are? If you Anyway, it, on my screen, it looks odd. Um, I think the 26th. They're judging. They're doing the final judging. But yeah, I just submitted it um, just because I. It said all our. You know, a lot of these are just. Oh, it's got to be produced in the in the year. It's done like Spectrum magazine. Usually, they wanted something you're submitting should be fairly new. Uh, this was like again. I done this a long time ago. But it said, oh, your favorite kind of your favorite piece. You just submit to the final art prize. So I got to do this one. So I did. Wow, mm, I got, I got that's amazing. And there's uh, Andrew Course, a good friend of mine. Who, he's got one piece in there too. So it's like, uh oh. <laughs> and um, Brian Booth Craig, who's an amazing sculptor, he's he's also up. He's probably won a bunch of times already because that guy's insanely amazing. But um, yeah, so thank you. I just uh, I kind of found this out yesterday or the other day. That's nice. It's the motion in the eel is. Yeah. So I don't even know. Like for some, and you say you're self-taught. I know you taught. You you have our background in illustration, but I don't know how the hell somebody figures that out. Even if you are trained, it's <laughs> well. This was a lot. Well, I mean, when insane. I I just started. I mean, there was a piece from a, that was an inspiration for that called uh, from an art an artist in the like, turn of the century, Edward McCartan, and he's like a pretty well known of. Uh, like you know art nouveau kind of sculptor and, and he did that the famous piece diana the huntress or whatever she's this woman nude uh with a, a dog on a leash kind of leaping forward um i think it's just called diana but you can you, it, and it's just this beautiful elegant piece and it, it's kind of leaping forward like in this room she's like holding back and it's just really elegant i just it was very inspirational for me so i started my own version of that sort of just this mm. 
figure walking. I, I don't want a dog or something common. So I just, I don't know why. I just started sculpting. And then I started figuring out what to do with it. And then I, I don't know why. I, I saw her as kind of these straight lines up and down and, and vertical and stuff. And then I needed another design element going the other way. Mm -hmm. So I saw a horizontal element, just an eel, because it's just like a fluid ribbon kind of. Totally fluid, yeah. Kind of counterbalancing her kind of you know, pose and stuff. So I just started making that and sticking it together and just kind of evolved in clay, which is, I tell you, I never, like, this was never a drawing. I said, I want to make that. So it was just it evolved over, even over like a year. It just like sits around and I get back to it, sits around. And one wow. guy, a friend of mine did a lot of cabinet work and he he said, that's cool. When he saw it in my studio, it was half done. He goes, wow, what's that going to be? I, that's going to be a bronze, I hope. He goes, Oh, if you ever make it, I want one. And so we wanted cabinets done in our bedroom. Oh, nice. <laughs> he goes, wow. So he got me to finish it and get it cast, <laughs> which thank God for that guy, because it probably would still be sitting in my studio. Um, <laughs> so I did it, cast it, and, you know, and then he did the work, amazing work he did. So I, had, I finally had it done, and then I showed it around and, you know, started selling them once in a while when people realize a bronze costs. And so... Mm -hmm. Finally sold the addition size after probably six to seven years of doing it, and then um, so it's all sold out. But, do you, do you so, enjoy bronze? I mean, like, because I, I see, I see on your on your Instagram, you do a lot of the the um, um, what do you call it when you hit it with the torch uh, patina? Is that right? Yeah, I yeah, I, I don't do that. I mean, I have to take it to the foundry. They do all that, but that's to me is amazing. I mean, do, you, do you enjoy? Do you enjoy kind of that? Like, you know, I mean, it's pretty damn substantial and permanent. I mean, that, I'm assuming that's, you know, obviously the reason, but yeah, when, the, the patina, first one, I, have you ever done yeah. it yourself? Like patina? No, I've never, I've never done the process. I would love to, there is a place near us that's called the crucible and it's a kind of a teaching foundry where you can take classes and do all the process yourself. Oh, okay. You wow. Get your sculpture in, do the mold and cast and all the crap you never want to do anyway. <laughs> right. But to learn a patina would be awesome to do. So someday I got to do that. But, you know, the foundry I work with is really near me. It's 10 minutes away. So I can go down and say, they'll say the piece is ready for patina. I usually come down there and work with Aya, the patina artist, to, if it's a new piece, we decide, decide on what colors. And I watch her and I say, do this, you know, art director, which I try to be cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so, it's just hands-on right there. It's nice instead of sending it somewhere and hoping it comes back the way you like. Right. So, and then once you got that first bronze you've done, it's like, wow. You, you literally, you feel it in your hands. It's like, this is freaking going to last forever. It's just some, so much more than a resin something or other. So and, substantial. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah. And, you know. and it's like, now it's real art, you know, instead of just yeah. you know, fun sculpture so it, it was it's kind of a it's expensive but it got under my skin so once i was you know get money enough to make a piece i would so i, I kept doing it more and more throughout the years and luckily i sell them once in a while i don't go to any galleries or anything like that i haven't oh you just took my question away why don't you do a oh. gallery showing i had actually did i did one well i had a piece sent down to i think it was santa fe i i, I might have been the eel walker and Santa Fe is not the place for the Eel Walker, really, because it's usually it's like cowboy and Indian stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Well, well, Indian Indian for that. So it, I think it was in a in a place for a while. It might have been another sculpture. It might have no. I think it was my one of the mermaids I've done, which still wouldn't work in Santa Fe. Hmm. Uh, and it just a Western. She was wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah, it would have no. sold. But it sat there <laughs> for like you know. A year and it's said okay i said send it back please yeah no but like a gallery showing where it's just you take the whole gallery over and it's just oh, like no, no, a no, night no. Night someday, someday but it's always the i mean galleries they take you know usually take 50 percent. so you gotta oh, if i went, i was selling eel walker for uh it started 6500 bucks and it you know she was 19 inches tall 28 inches long the eel substantial piece yeah. It cost me it cost me three grand to have it cast every time. Ooh. Mine, you know, the first time I had to mold it and that cost. But anyway, so every casting was like three grand because it was a little bit complicated. 
So I, I, you know, I basically doubled it a little bit more. And that, so if that went to a gallery, they would have to double it. And so that thing would be, you know, 15 grand if somebody would want one. And ah, but you're in a gallery with if all I the wanted to get with my, people. If, if I wanted to get my, you know, six grand or 6,500 worth to pay off. So, I, you know, basically I made three grand on it, maybe. But if it, oh, okay. if it went to a gallery, I'd have to say I need this at least. And then they have to double that. And then it's like, it gets out oh, of range, yeah. really. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. of course, people shopping at galleries have that kind of. No, money. Exactly. Um, yeah. Make it an NFT. You'll tell them <laughs> I know, right? Oh, thank God that fad's almost over. <laughs> now that I've now that I've made NFTs. Yeah. Mark, speaking of, speaking of cool sculptures that you've done, um, when it comes to like gallery, that, I, obviously that's one thing. But I hear you did one for uh, a George Lucas um, for Skywalker, right? For the ranch yeah. or something? In their fireplace. I, I'd love to know about the, how that even came about. Yeah, it was. Um, I did actually two fireplace facades wow. that were bronze that would you know fit on the front of a fireplace, the you know the face and then the mantle okay. around it. Yeah. Um, I just got called by a a guy in the industry who who worked at Lucasfilm um, about this project or an email. I I was listening. I was read it. I'm like, oh my god, no way, no way, no way. So I I. <laughs> I I was talking to them and they'd say, well, we have this, we've done it. Um, we had, we had another artist cast or sculpt and cast what we wanted, but it just didn't work out. It wasn't, it, they didn't have the, the flair because George Lucas is really, really sharp on design with Art Nouveau and stuff. He's, he collects that kind of furniture and, and all this stuff in his, in his, in his house and, and at Skywalker Ranch apparently. So, he was super keen on the certain subtleties of all these players. So when they contacted me, it was like the second try to do this. I was working on a bunch of sculpts for Stanford University, a couple of their sports, I uh, got commissioned to a bunch of sports figures for them, which was another grail project kind of thing. Wow. So I was working on that at the time. I, I was just like, oh, this is too much, too much. I, I kind of had to I, I had to turn it down because it was just too busy. And they said, no, there's no time limit. We, we like your work. Please consider it. So I'm like, I'd be dumb just to keep saying no. Wow. So I went there, yeah. <laughs> I went there and, and they showed me all the stuff, the designs that Eric Tiemann did. He's a concept designer. is working a lot of the films. And he's, I think he still works there at ILM. Um, amazing artist. I mean, the guy is amazing. And so he did all this incredibly tight work of just what they wanted and so show me all this stuff i was blown away intimidated and like really i don't know if i can even do this kind of thing so i said yes of course that's <laughs> how you get it. Um, and i worked on it and stuff and it was it was amazing because it was just the whole process of dealing with him and there and then i had to take the sculpture a few times literally i had to build make the sculpture in this huge box where i can actually take it on site for them to look at it. So I had to take it there a few times to Skywalker Ranch where George Lucas comes in and make talk about it, take a couple notes, and then I'd bring it back and work on it. And wow. I know it's so <laughs> surreal. It's so freaking surreal. But I, I did one for the the um the main house, which is at Skywalker Ranch, is where they do all the production on, you know, a lot of the film and stuff in in um San Anselmo in California here. <clears throat> um then I did one for his bedroom. It was a different design that the same guy designed. So one was in, in his bedroom in his house. So I had to actually bring that to his actual house, go up to his bedroom and with his people, we set it up and he'd come in the morning and look at it. I was like, oh my God, I'm in George Lucas' bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it was really freaky and bizarre and amazing. And um, his artwork all over his house, is just original um, Maxfield oh. Parrish paintings. Mar oh my uh, God. I mean, uh, Norman Rockwell yeah. paintings. He had the original sketch of a Norman Rockwell painting of that cop sitting at the soda fountain, the back view, and the little runaway kid with the, yeah, <clears throat> you know, with the little like pouch, like he was going to run oh, away. Oh, yeah. Talking yeah. to the kid. He had this original drawing of this painting, of, of the actual size painting hanging in his house. I was like, wow. So, anyway, but so he's, that was. He's got a couple bucks, you know, that guy, I think, you know. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so what did he do again? Star Trek? Is that what he did? I forget. Star, uh, <laughs> That'll start Galactica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Logan's run. Oh, my God. 
That's amazing, Mark. So that was that was pretty wild and crazy. And Did you get to use George Lucas's bathroom? No, I didn't. But damn it! I took Next a time, you got to lie and say yes. Should have dumped a big old load and left. But <laughs> little upper decker. <laughs> upper decker. That's yeah. the story. The, the second time I was bringing the sculpt into this this house, I brought it there, and his and his uh his man his assistant was like, "Okay, let's bring it upstairs." So we both, you know, we bring it upstairs. We set it there. And then he's, um, he wasn't quite there yet, so I had to leave it. So I came back the next day to pick it up. So I go there, and I and I can't bring it down myself because it's pretty big and heavy. And oh, yeah. and she, okay, I'll call someone to help. So she leaves the room. I'm the only one in there now. And so she's calling somebody. And so I walk up, you know, his, his bedroom. I'm looking down the hallway at the artwork and stuff. And then I, you know, and that's upstairs. And you can kind of look downstairs and, the, the foyer is there, the front door, and I hear someone come in, and I, I kind of, I hear George's voice. I'm like, uh-oh. I'm the only one upstairs. Um, <laughs> he comes home, and I kind of peek, and I see him, say, oh, shit, if he comes up here now, I, I, this is going to be really awkward. Because, <laughs> like, you know, he meets you and doesn't me remember you kind of thing. So it's like, yeah. okay, so I, I kind of look for him, and he goes into another room downstairs. So I go down the stairs and stand in the foyer <laughs> waiting there, like, okay, now I'm, I'm the least not <laughs> so formal. <laughs> and where'd the assistant go? I don't know where she went. So <laughs> then George comes walking back to him, and he's like, and he looks at me like, whoa, who, where'd you come from? And he didn't say anything. I just go, hi, I'm Mark. And I smile. I'm the sculptor who's working on it. He goes, oh, okay, thank you. And he, he kind of smiled and then walked away. He's like, he didn't really say anything. I'm like, but then the assistant comes back and they're talking and he starts to make these jokes about the situation, kind of like poking fun at it and, uh, to make the assistant laugh. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. This is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all it was all cat, all cool and stuff. I thought just think if he came up the stairs and like saw me in his bedroom. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that would have been yeah. No, it's a good thing you made a break to go downstairs. Holy <laughs> God. Or else security would have been on me. <clears throat> So, so if you, or if you really panicked and hid in the closet and then he got like make it worse. It gets worse. You're wearing a Darth Vader mask and you're like oh. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so um, Mark, we told you uh yesterday in the pre-show that this would be the fastest 90 minutes on the internet. It is, it's gone, and right? We, wow. at, yeah, we are at 90 don't. minutes. You're ruining our day, Mickey. Thanks. Sorry. So Look at you guys, man. I love those. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's go around and see what you guys are creating. Uh, Matt, I'm gonna go with you first. All right. I'm. I gotta use Mark's trick of like getting it closer to the camera. Or maybe this using a white background. That's no, nice. Hang on. I, don't, I need a white background. All right. So or just see. or fill the screen mostly. Then we'll focus. Yeah, that's good. Right there. Okay. So. So he's getting underway. I think I'm going to yeah. take – so I can make a profile. I think I might cut a chunk out of the back and make a, a rounder nose here for him and, and, and oh, yeah. punk that on. But um, I'm kind of trying to make him as, as evil as possible. Yeah. I don't know what to do with the bottom of his mouth, but um, I'm just trying to make him what, – what's the prompt, Mickey? Angry? Enraged. Uh, enraged. Enraged. So he'll, be, he'll be super enraged when it's all done. And honestly, I'm thinking – you know how like those – um, some clowns have like the court jestery things with bells hanging off them or something like that. Yeah. I, I yep. might do something like a cowl up here with like a one of those. <laughs> That'd be cool. So anyway. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> hey. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh. oh. oh hello. <laughs> Who's that guy? Hello, kids. Yeah. I'm still roughing. You know, it takes me a while. Nice. I wanted to have that like. I know. I love that underbite. Over yeah, there. and like Matt said, so I'm gonna try and push this all the way back, and then leave this alone here, and then I'll add it to get the complete profile. But as you can see, I still gotta pull all this back to the side. This is probably all gonna have to get pushed back in. There's a lot to go. Like this whole first hour and a half is really just roughing it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And, cool. and then making sure I'm not getting too close to any kind of core. Which would be up in here, so I'm not too worried. But on like the temples, if I'm going to pull it back, oh yeah, and, and around the cheekbones and the zygomatic arch, whatever the hell that's called, if I'm going to put <laughs> that in, that's really going to push it in. Process. Yeah, I love so, it. We're working. I know. Look, well, you got a lot of detail on the teeth where, where the gum are. That's pretty good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'm going to scratch that all the way and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a, it's a placeholder. 
yes. so I can see where which direction I'm going in. <laughs> D, D Murray says, "Art director, do your job." So, Paul, um, <laughs> I have a few notes. <laughs> um, okay, can you start over? Uh, is there? Is yeah, there can you turn around. around the side. <laughs> 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 yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, so perfect. Um, <laughs> So I wanted to flip uh, through uh, some of more of Mark's uh, slides before we sign off for tonight. I mean, I mean, some of this. Holy Moses! Dude, God, unbelievable. That's what I see. That's what I was, was channeling that guy. That was what I was channeling. If yours is one detail less than that, I will be so disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the skull up in the in the. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do the design on it. This was. Uh, called Malavestros. He was part of the Court of the Deadline from Sideshow. <clears throat> it was designed by um, Rachel. Uh, uh, she's Rachel Rodenbeck. She's an amazing concept designer, but she did a lot of this work. Um, and then I add flair to it as well, but it was a lot of fun, that piece. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you did. The, the expression's dynamite, too. I Just did. enough of the, I mean, I, the whole the brow. piece. He, uh, that face pops off, and there's a swap out, which is a skull. So it's like you can peel off his face. Oh, <laughs> so <killer. Wow. clears throat> oh look at that. Look at the stitches. That's that Frankenstein right there, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that was a digital, my own version of Frankenstein. That's digital? Yeah, Who's and then that? it's the pass, and then I painted it. I have it somewhere around here. Good <laughs> Lord. Oh, so good. We but saw I, the. I took a photo and tweaked the colors to make it more dramatic. Yeah, we yeah. saw the oh, Rolling Stones. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the detail on this is nuts. The hair. She was a. She was a human predator. Worked for the predators. She was a. Oh. You know. So that's why she has a predator outfit on. Yeah. Oh, I just and, her her and, her, and she's wearing armor to protect all her vital organs. Right. Oh. <laughs> giggity, 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 go. I don't think I put my weapon down for that one. You know I, mean? I don't, just don't get hit in the midsection. As well. I, know, <laughs> I didn't design it. I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my design. Look at Godzilla. Godzilla. I didn't design him either. <laughs> no? I was uh, side yes, oh, this Come is some of yeah, it's part of the Ebony Vision line. Ebony Visions. That's, I worked I, on I that line it. for like, I worked on that line for like eighteen years. Literally, it was oh. that long. It was like every year I did about seven or eight pieces for them as a collectible. Wow. I was actually getting a royalty on this too, so that was like, ah, oh, the best deal <laughs> I ever worked because it was gold. It was gravy for a long, long time because it, this line really hit well with the African American community. Was, yeah, so. and this and is Thomas a Blackshear who designed all this stuff. Got an amazing, amazing artist, a Thomas Blackshear. If you ever look him up, an illustrator, he does a lot of the old uh, cowboy paintings now. For um, anyway, the guy's an amazing painter, illustrator. It was his whole concept of this con this line. Yeah, it's really cool. This is uh, the Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we showed some of your uh, zebra stuff, we've shown some of your uh, painting work here. I have a couple more. Um, yeah, this is another uh part of that line too yeah, that yeah. really wow. amazing clay or digital this was all clay these these were when i did all this line it was all super sculpty super Good symmetrical Lord. what it is see that that's the that's the remarkable part paul right i mean this is you you wouldn't even know it's it's so perfect like how is that not digital those, right. i mean well those wings were pain in the butt because i you know when you first did the drawing the drawing was kind of loose so i did these wings with all this detail on them mm which took a long time because no, no, they're supposed to be stylized. I, I didn't know that. So I did re sculpt the wing, do the whole thing again. Oh, and my God. Sculpting those. Oh, yeah. Dig I'm not digitally. Oh my God. Anyway. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's See, just Matt, a just got a butternut squash. And yeah. Mickey. Yeah. We're doing butternut squash, right? That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Someday I'll be able to do wings and butternut squash. Not <laughs> you know, just take two more, cut out the wings out of the back of this one. Yeah, sure. And then, then when you get up the next morning to finish it, it's dehydrated. Yeah, it's turned to <laughs> turn 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 really then do a cape. A wing, then a cape. Well, there you go. Cape. Yeah, I'll just I'll just do something else for a living. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday, Mark. I hope to be on on uh the footsteps of your level. Oh, 
Get over yourself. Looking up at you. Get over me. No. <laughs> I appreciate it. Do you, it. Do you want to follow Mark's work? Uh, go to his Instagram. He also has a, a Deviant Art uh, where you can follow him. Is there anywhere else we can see your work? I, I haven't did posted on Deviant Art in no century. So all right, so don't go there. <laughs> Mostly Instagram, Facebook, and Instagram because. I don't even hey, have well, a proper website. Uh, you, you, Instagram you, kind of becomes the your name website. Stands alone. Just <clears throat> yeah. Do you ever offer classes or anything? Have you ever th thought of doing that? I not personally, Actually. but I was I was assisting um, sculpt uh, sculpt anatomy sculpting class workshops with Andrew Kors for from Anatomy Tools. Do you know that company? He's the guy who it. produces all the uh, ecrochets everybody has. I mean, oh. Oh, well, I gotta grab these are the old ones. Yikes. Anyway, he produces that everyone yeah. has these. Oh, yeah. These, yeah. Are the, these are the bigger ones. This is years ago. But anyway, he was running all these he's running all these workshops of sculpting for you know anatomy sculpture. So I was assisting him. That's the only teaching I've actually really done. Mm -hmm. Is helping people, you know, work the clay and sculpt, and he does the um the demo, you know, he does a lot of the uh, drawings and the and the um the lectures and stuff and i do demos and stuff and so you're sculpting with a model but you're learning the anatomy and stuff well i think you do Pretty really well teacher, in this format in this virtual format you got a you got a great sense of humor a great personality and all the talent in the world i, I think people would line up if you had like a patreon or something like that where you yeah, just I, you taught a class maybe once a month i know i oh, always think that but i mean i'm not i'm the kind of guy that just like goes in a direction and then goes in another direction it's like i don't uh, know if i could keep it up a patreon page would be a lot of work and a commitment that yeah because you gotta it's content right you gotta keep cranking out content if you're working on a big project you you're nda you know with then you it might be a tough yeah project. and it's yeah I and mean, people sign up and they like they'll drop in a month because Stu's not doing anything new <laughs> <laughs> um i know no i said but I, I appreciate that thank you very much i was i i, I need to get more focus on that kind of because i'm you know i'm gonna get worn out so i gotta do something else <laughs> well you're doing you're doing fine by the looks of it uh, yeah the, my the God, we're... body of work speaks for itself and it it was amazing having you on i appreciate you taking the time thank i you. mean i didn't know who the hell i was talking to at the time it was my favorite part of the whole thing. We were just hanging out at Monster Palooza, having some laughs, and then you were like, "Hey, I'm Mark," and it was like, "Holy shit, that's Mark Newman." Well, I remember we well, met. We were all. It was like after hours. For I think it was Friday night after the show. Yeah, it was yeah a couple of a couple of days. Was, down, it was at yeah. eleven. The bar was closed, so we hung out for the bar, and then we start talking with you guys with Dave Igo, and oh man, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It really was. I think that's where I you know, that's, here. That's why we're we're so inspired by by carving oil because I think it brings out the best. <laughs> and, and meet, you can't have a good meet and greet with get to meet so Mark so Newman, so right? one of these. Right, exactly. You're on your third different kind there, man. <laughs> yes, Ryan <laughs> says I love your YouTube demo from Anatomy Tools. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that okay. Yeah, that one was. Odd. I mean, yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, they, when I do demos with them, sometimes it's like okay, they put the camera there, and then I'm always getting my head in the way, and they're filming it. It's like oh. <laughs> the lights are on me, and I'm trying to look like I'm cool. It's just oh, it's stressed. <laughs> <laughs> and then the thing turns out like crap. Sometimes it's like one yeah. turned out good. Maybe that's the one he's talking about. That's the one. That's, <laughs> that's the one. one. That's always the one. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Always. When in doubt. So we'd love to have you back, Mark, uh, anytime. Uh, uh, definitely, week. this has been great. I said we, we uh, I've probably only uh, gone through, what, about one one-hundredth of your uh, portfolio. So there's so much more to explore here. Uh, if you are if you like what we do, uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and we're even on TikTok. How about that? No! Yeah, okay. go figure. So, um, yeah, we will. Uh, this is a Wednesday night edition. We will be back thursday with at our regular spot uh next week um guys any last words before we sign off for today yeah follow thank this you. guy thank yeah. you mark newman man it is we are so so blessed to have you uh oh there thank you guys this has been a blast <laughs> i mean yeah it's, it's, we, maybe awesome. like, We're, okay let's just talk over each other for a couple minutes here <laughs> Go for it. i usually hate talking about myself but you guys make it easy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, well, thank you. Your work pleasure. speaks for itself, and we're just massive fans, and we always will be. And and again, we're we're, glad, we're so glad we got to meet you in person and have a drink with you. And let's let's do it again soon. Hopefully next year, Mars Blues again, and and maybe even another another time. But dude, we we are just so grateful to have you on our show. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mick. No, I mean, I, yeah. Thanks for asking me, and it's great to meet you guys. Awesome, awesome. It's a Thanks. pleasure, and we'll see you next Thursday. For another yeah, Carvers and Creators. All right. Good night, nice. everyone. Take Good care. Night, everybody. See you guys.